Happy New Year, everybody. Happy New Year! It's the New Year Woo. episode for uh, Cities of Blood podcast. I was like, you need your microphone. I need my microphone next to me. Now you can hear you. If uh, anybody didn't hear what I said before, Happy New Year. So, uh, it isn't quite New Year yet, but we're getting ready for it. Well, technically when it airs, this is it's New Year's Eve. Yeah. So, um, we hope everybody and has We're going to call this the safe family episode. Family episode. Sort of. And uh, have a safe and responsible holiday while you're watching this family episode. Right. Please don't be watching this while you're driving. Yeah. So Unless you have an Uber driver. Speaking of family episode, I heard uh, over Thanksgiving there was a, a father and son that had a, a bit of an argument over a football game. Um, no, it was, they were arguing all the way. Now i got to find that article. It was... Uh, I thought it was a football, about no, ne- kneeling they, at the they, football yeah, game. Yeah, so in uh, North Carolina, police are saying a man shot and wounded his son on Thanksgiving <laughs> after a heated fight about an- NFL athletes kneeling during the national anthem. <laughs> No. I shouldn't laugh because it's not funny, but it's, it's it's not funny. I don't think anybody was killed, right? This was um, no, it's his uh, 21 year old Esteban Marley Valencia and his brother argued during dinner about an athlete protest uh, re- to protest racial injustice. Uh, where, and then the reports the father George uh, told officers then he physically attacked his other son, uh, so he retrieved a shotgun. Uh. Uh, they started throwing furniture and, uh, uh, that hit him in the face with a water bottle. Uh, he was holding the gun by its pistol grip and squeezed the trigger. Valencia was shot in the hand and leg, was taken to the hospital for treatment. Uh, this was the best Thanksgiving he's ever. Been, he, the father has been arrested for uh, aggravated assault. Uh could you imagine if you're like a friend of this kid? The best part and about he invites this is you over? it's it's unclear if he has a lawyer. <laughs> That's that is the end of the article. Way to go, North Carolina news people. Could could you imagine you know, like being a being a friend and being invited over for 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 a holiday like in the future? Something? No, no. I mean, like before, like the being there and and just oh be, yeah yeah. Because I've had a weird experiences before where I've been invited to you know like people's parties and shit like that. And really weird shit goes down, you know, where you where you're just like, okay, I didn't see that one fucking coming. Could you imagine being a fly on the wall for this one? That's the that's the one where. So when the shotgun or, comes out, or it's like you hear about it and you go, "Meh, I believe it." You know what I mean? It's like you. It's it's either or. Like, wow, really? That happened to the Valencia family, or doesn't surprise me. You know. That's uh, the whole tension between father and son. You know, I, I hope I would never ever get in a fight with my father or my son. But your um, son would probably kick your ass. He would destroy me. Because right? he's you know, like nine he, feet tall. Well, yeah, and he's a black belt in jujitsu. And, and he's half know, Bigfoot. Yeah, you know, that's the Sasquatch <laughs> genes are strong, man. It's the. Uh, <laughs> he is a. But, you know, but I just can't imagine somebody, you know, like, like Marvin Gaye's father. Oh, like God, retaliating yeah. to the extent of I'm Murder. gonna pull a gun on my son and shoot him. Right. I'm sorry, but I'd I'd rather take an ass whooping. It, it's just uh, how do you live with yourself after you after you've uh, you shot your own kid? And and I, and I think too, it's like how much booze was involved. No shit. Now this is the other thing. Everybody's still up in arms about marijuana being legalized everywhere now. Just about, and it's about damn time. You consider, I bet you, if you look into that incident, it, there was a, that was a booze oh, fueled holiday. And I'm not gonna stereotype, but I bet you there was tequila. Oh yeah, I'm sure. And some sort of light beer, <laughs> right? Just throwing it out there. And Budweiser. Well, well, no, well Bud Light, but, yeah, you know. I had a friend, a Mexican friend, years ago. We had to stop for beer somewhere. We were heading out. He's like, I'm getting a real good Mexican beer, and he comes out with Budweiser. <laughs> <laughs> Corona Light. Yeah. And then, uh, yeah, so then, okay, so my favorite story that that um, we chatted about earlier is um, dude responds to his own wanted post on Facebook, this is and it's one. hilarious. So I'm going to read this verbatim. Um, this was posted, I don't know, right around December 5th. That's uh, Johnny Cash, the... Uh, C.O.B. Cat Host. Uh, 
So this is in Rich Richmond or oh, Richland. Uh I think in Washington. WA would have to be Washington, I would think. Uh so one police uh, man named Anthony Akers, wanted by the Department of Corrections for failure to comply. Um, about six days after the post, Anthony Akers pays, calm down, I'm going to turn myself in. Police Department. Hey, Anthony, we haven't seen you yet. Our business hours are 8 to 5, Monday through Friday. Of course, if you need a ride, call us. They then It's like the non-emergency hotline they give them. Uh, he then tags the police department in the post. Thank you. Uh, tying up a couple loose ends since I will probably be there for a month. Should be in in the next 48 hours. A person asks, has he turned himself in yet? Uh, the, the department replies, no. Uh, somebody then says, Anthony's a man of his word. He's got, it's all he's got sometimes and seems like you don't keep our word or so he's got his friends posting yeah, to the police, too? so his friends too. posting, yeah. Then he says, Dear PD Department, it's not you, it's me. I am obviously have commitment issues. I apologize <laughs> for standing you up, but let me make it up to you. I will be there no matter, no, no later than lunchtime tomorrow. I know you have no reason to believe me after what I did, but I promise that if I don't make it on my own by lunchtime tomorrow, I will call you for a ride to assist me with my commitment issues. Thank you in advance. Uh, to your response, if you are patiently giving me another chance with us, I know I don't deserve it. Uh, P.S. You're beautiful. <laughs> then a guy just writes, I'm crying. Um, this is The Bachelor. Uh, I think another police department. Oh, no. So they then write, Morose Monday, Dear Anthony, is it us? Last Wednesday, we reached out to you as wanted. You replied and even said you were going to turn yourself in. We waited. You didn't show. After you stood us stood us up, we reached out again, this time offering you a ride. You replied and said you needed 40 hours. The weekend came and went. We were beginning to think you were not coming. Please call us anytime. We will come get you. He then posts, and we're going to send this. I'm going to screen cap this picture. Here for our date, sweetheart. Kissy like a uh, little emoji face, and it's him hitting the the like button to the police, the station, police station door. door. That's awesome. See, so, yeah, I'm gonna screen cap this right now and send it to you so you can put it in the video. But when I read this, that's I, now I read this with earphones in. Yeah. At a Starbucks at like seven in the morning on like a Sunday or something, and I know everyone in there was like this weird motherfucker is like gonna kill us all because they didn't know why I was like snort laughing so hard and i want to be like just let me read this article article to you guys that was awesome um, i hope he gets a, a lenient sentence because of that oh man I, I it is the funniest thing like one what the hell was he was, he, was the warrant for again? it didn't say it didn't say what he was Oh, it said Department of Corrections failure to comply. So maybe he maybe he Parole didn't didn't uh, report to his parole officer. I would think Excuse that's me. what the that was me texting you the picture that I want you to post in the video. Thanks. Um, uh, let's see. Hold on. Yes, my text sound is a whistle and a fart. All right. So now, since this episode is a little light. And we're about to lose the battery. Oh, wow. Good thing I got the other one ready. Okay. Um, Texas man admits to kidnapping 79 people to anally probe them while disguised as an alien. (laughs) 79. So now... All at, all at the same time? Like, did he have a bus? <laughs> did he hijack a bus? <laughs> this is the... This is a running routine for him. This is the full headline. Did he have more than one costume? 79 uh, times is like a lot. So it says, El Paso, Texas. A man who, who was arrested by the FBI yesterday has confirmed or confessed to kidnapping and sexually assaulting several dozen people while using costumes, drugs, and special effects to have his victims believe they have been abducted by aliens. That is the headline 
that came across this the is news elaborate. Line. Oh, wow. Yeah. So. So he drug him and used special effects. Yeah. So 73 year old Arnold White was arrested after a joint investig- investigation led by the FBI, uh, the El Paso Sheriff's Office, and the El Paso Police Department. Originally interrogated about four crimes committed in the, in the region in the 90s, the retired trucker confessed to a total of 79 kidnappings across California, Nevada, New York, Mexico, Texas, over a period of 40 years. He's a trucker? Uh, Mr. Mr. White confessed to using a mix of hallucinato- hallucinatory drugs containing LSD, PCP, uh, to subdue his victims before approaching them and carrying them inside his truck to assault them. In order to confuse his victims even more, he had it set up inside his truck to look like an operating room and would wear an alien costume. FBI spokesman Daryl Johnson described the abuse that accused the accused afflicted to his victims as extremely disturbing. And I really don't mean to laugh. But it went from being funny to all of a sudden I'm trying to I'm like, this guy's a sick fuck. Um he would insert fingers and objects in their various body cavities oh as he would even create his own sex toys designed to look like alien tools and medical instruments. So this is at truck stops, oh, I guess. I'm, t- I'm thinking, I mean, where else? I mean, you don't take a, a big rig to like a normal place. Over 40 years, though, I would think, you you know, there's truck stops that, truck stops now are like little cities. Well, exactly. And you would think that somebody else would happen to notice this guy carrying this, you know, staggering drugged person to their, you know, to... Mm, if they're lot lizards, they're not going to say a word. Uh, uh, according to Mr. Johnson, most of the victims were loners and migra- uh, marginals. I don't remember. Is that, what's a marginal? Marginal just means somebody on the, F- the edges of society. Uh, okay. A fact that helps Mr. Homeless. White evade arrest for so long. He, uh, he chose victims who were gullible and might fall for his traps. Several of his victims were actually UFO investigators he found hanging out around Area 51 or Roswell. Note to self. <laughs> someone, oh. someone shows up offering to take you out and show you some aliens. Don't uh, go. Arnold White now faces a total of 375 criminal charges, including several charges of kidnapping aggravated assault by use of drugs, oral copulation by anesthesia or controlled controlled substance, assault with intent to commit a sexual offense, uh, possessions of controlled substance. Uh, he could face a term of more than 382 years in life if found guilty of all counts. The 70-year-old was denied bail this morning and will remain in detention until he begins his caught? trial in January. Did they say how he got uh, They said it was like a, a joint FBI El Paso County at Paso PD investigation. 73. And he's 79. Been doing, 70, he's been doing it for 40 years? And Yeah. And honestly, dude, this guy looks like he's about 79 minutes from death. So we'll, uh, I'm going to screen cap this picture. You can post it as well. Well, it's, it's kind of like that. The, the, the guy Little. Like, you're already getting these guys when they're octogenarians. Yeah, like when they're already about to be dead. It's okay. They've already had their entire lives to be as bad as they were and got away with it. Right? And it's like, why are you... Why are you... Uh... Not that they shouldn't be punished. That's not my point. My point is it's just... Maybe if the police had done their job and investigated those crimes in the so first no, here's, place. So, here's the thing. Here's my my... So now they have to take those 79 crimes yeah, and match them up if they know who all 79 people are with people who've been abducted by aliens. Yeah. And then, de- it's me. And then debunk them. Yeah, okay. You know? Like you say in 1983, you and two buddies who were in the Marines I was were abducted, abducted by man. aliens. And you got probed anally, and then you're like, well, no, yeah, you that, were in El Paso, Texas, and... That was actually Walter here, you know, say, or whatever his name is. No, no. You know, Phil, when you were anally probed, that was in Thailand, we won't talk about it. Jesus. Um, hold on, what was there any other funny ones that I... That one was uh, the funniest, uh, even though it's... You know, it's not funny, but there there is something funny about it. Um, this is This thing is just more of a... Uh, like a random story. I don't even know who it's about. Um, 
it was just a, a like a almost like a meme I found. Yeah. Said uh, a man renovated a three story hotel specifically to kill people, it included stairways to nowhere, a maze of over three hundred windowless rooms. He killed as many as two hundred people in it. The skeletons of his victims were sold to medical schools. Oh, I know this story. That's the doctor from uh, eight, late 1800s, early 1900s. Is it, it looks really old, yeah. It's it was a, a Chicago fair or something, a state fair or something. Oh, what the hell is his name? Yeah, he was, uh, he was a, a trained physician, and he would sell the, um, not cadavers, but the, but the actual um, skeletons, because skeletons, are a, a cleaned and polished skeleton as a specimen for a medical school or college was would fa- a lot of money back then. Right. And so uh, everybody he killed, he'd like dip them in acid and, and, you know, clean the bones and set them up and then sell them as anatomical specimens. And then, then I did find another article. It's not really, I mean, it's not really a uh, murder mystery thing, but it was yeah. uh, discovery of secret rooms on, plans- on plantation uh, reignites the Jefferson Hemingway controversy. Um, what's well, President Thomas Je- or Thomas Jefferson? Oh, um, it was just one of those things where uh, let's see. Uh, this is, Thomas Jefferson was often heralded as a wise and moral man who uh, helped lay the foundation of the American de- democracy. He was a primary author of the Declaration of Independence. Uh, the third president of the United States. He was slave owner. He has memorials dedicated to him in the National's capital. Uh, his home in the Virginia is a popular tourist destination. During some of the maintenance construction, workers came across a secret room. The room itself was one thing, but its location in the house, particularly, uh, peculiarly, pe- peculiar, peculiarly, peculiarly, yeah, raised some questions. Um, the discovery reopened a controversy that had been. Swirling around the president's legacy for over 200 years. Uh, I'm trying to get to the article. I mean, we all know his house was a plantation. Yeah. Uh, well, I mean, there's the whole the the Sally Hemings thing, the Jefferson in Paris, all that crap. Well, right? that's what the, that's his Hemings is was his okay. the woman he had children so, with, yeah. the black woman he had children with. Uh, over the front of years. The Monticello plantation was seeing a lot of restorations throughout the years, uh, with projects picking up during the 20th century when it was converted into a museum. The mystery room was completely hidden from sight uh, when the modern ballroom was installed over in 1941. Uh, the bathroom was renovated again in the 60s due to the high influx of visitors come, uh, coming to the museum. Uh, but once more, the changes in construction did not reveal the long-lost room uh, what ultimately gave archaeologists? So we were uh, we were talking about the uh, the Jefferson Higgins. Uh, sorry, about this. Jefferson Hemings. Hemings. Sally Hemings. Uh, house. Basically, they they have found. But that that hidden room. What what's what the bottom line with it? What, bottom what the of the hidden room is, is is it's was where uh, where the crap I lost. Sex it. dungeon, torture chamber. Uh. He won. Of course, he had children by her, or she had children by him. Yeah. Um, um, it's where he kept his he kept his dirty secrets. It's there were the, documents where he kept. You know, there was like documentation of uh, the children that he had. Because you know, they believe uh, that he had more than one woman. Yeah. Lover, black woman lover, and that. Um, and now it's basically saying that. Um, he also was, it was probably where he kept the slaves, even though he said he never had slaves. Yeah. Well, he had slaves. They knew he had slaves. He took Sally Hemings with her to, uh, Paris, um, then, then brought her back to the United States. Yeah, but no, 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 that's where he kept her and the kids. Just in this tiny little room? Yeah. Doesn't seem right. So. They'd have to run on the plantation. But. Yeah, so the, uh, God, I'm trying to think of uh, family-related uh, crimes. We started off with that theme on this episode. Well, the one I can think of is probably one of California's notorious is we have two young brothers in the oh, greater Los right. Angeles yeah. area. That's right. 
The Melendez brothers. No, Menendez. Men- Menen- I always mess yeah, it up. The, the, Menendez. Uh, the the uh, Menendez brothers. Now, you sent me a, uh, a basketball playing card. Yes, with Mark Jackson, who I do believe is the coach of the Los Angeles Clippers right now. Now, now. Yeah, yeah. So back he was, in the day, back, he was this playing. Is when, yeah, this is when he is playing, and we'll show this in the in the clip. Um, uh, he's passing a ball to somebody. He's a New York Nick. And if you look in the picture, they're sitting next to each other. The thing with this picture is his parents were their parents were already dead. Oh, really? When that picture was taken? Yes. You know, because I, you know, so that was the week or the, the time afterwards where they were living it up, buying cars and going to basketball and games, and spending all their parents' money. Yeah. They had like, front, if you look behind this card, it looks like it's a front row. Oh, they're front row. They're on. They're yeah, court side seats. Court side seats. Yeah, they're not front row. Court side. Yeah. They legitimately, you know, if they had celebrities at Clippers games back then, that's um, where they'd be. They sitting. would be sitting there. You know. Now the. the uh, the Menendez brothers, I think there's a lot of fascinating, you know, things about them besides the fact that they murdered their mother and father with shotguns uh, for a, a generation that missed that trial. Go back and, and look it up and see what you can find out there. It, it, it's pretty fascinating. They were the spoiled rich kids, you know, the two, oh. the two spoiled rich kids that had everything and were given everything and, uh, and they murdered their parents brutally with shotguns. But uh, their defense was was what was, I think, most alarming about the entire thing. Not that it all wasn't absolutely horrific. But the defense was that uh, the father had been molesting both of the boys. Right. Which is, was bullshit, right? Well, that's the, I don't know. I'm not going to, you know, I mean, even if he did, it still doesn't justify murdering both of them with shotguns. Well, I think too is is uh, God, that was me again. Sorry, that's all right. Um, Good time. I'm just sending, I'm just sending, uh, yeah, right? Uh, just sending you the, the video or the picture clips for yeah. me. I, but I thought it came through that it wasn't true. It's I could be wrong. Yeah, it's a, supposedly okay. Let's just say everybody from uh, from the Menendez family, you know, from the father's side of the family, is saying no, it's absolutely not true. He wasn't that kind of guy, and this, that, the other thing. However. I think what's interesting to note is that um, old the old man Menendez uh, was he was a self made man. He did I think come from Cuba, married you know like you know some American you know all American girl type thing, and uh, and then made himself successful uh, in, in several ventures. But I mean, uh, literally got into the music business, and I heard he was managing Menudo during uh, the nineteen eighties. Oh, really? Yeah. Now, the reason uh, I, I bring that up is because Maduro has had several, uh, I guess, scandals over the years that it's come to light where some of these boys had been uh, molested and abused. And they had had, oh, God, uh, many members. I, I was you, are, you are correct. Their father came here. Jose Enrique Menendez uh, came here from Havana, Cuba in 1944. So... Th- while he was managing the um, the Latino singing group uh, Menudo, Menudo, yeah, they, they were they were big. Even though you know I didn't listen to them, they they you know in the eighties yeah, you'd yeah. see them. No, I mean they weren't really. They were they. I mean I don't know if they ever did. Isn't that where Ricky Martin came out well, of? Ricky Martin. Uh, God, there's there's a quite a few people that came that are big. Yeah. Or were big at some point came out of there. So they, they I think um Rico they, Suave came out of there. Really? So they were they were like the Latino new kids on the block kind of thing. Only they kept having a revolving um membership, you know, like they they would change uh, well, you, group you, members all the time. I think once you were sixteen you got kicked out of the group or Is something. That what, yeah, so you, you yeah, you had to be like fourteen to sixteen or thirteen to se- I yeah. know there was like a a teenage number where they wanted you gone and so we were talking about uh, the Menendez brothers, and uh, right, and their father was an uh, an executive for RCA Records. Jose, self made guy. Or Jose, I'm sorry. Uh, real motivated, but I believe he uh, he had something to do with the promotion of of the the group Menudo. We were talking yeah, about. Yeah, yeah. Well, it, it's saying. Now I heard he uh, he molested a few of those members of that band. 
Uh, well, it's saying that Ricky Martin is denying he was ever raped by him. Uh, but the evidence is clear they were acquainted, or that they had ever met, I'm sorry. But the evidence is clear they had met since he was an executive at RCA. He had an office in Miami, responsible for sourcing talent. Uh, he was an, an instrumental in managing the careers of groups like Menudo, the Latin boy band Martin was a member of as a child. Uh, she were right on that. Uh, uh, rumors started surfacing that members of Menudo were being trafficked, 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 and sold to older men in the industry as sex party for at sex parties. Uh, accusations and arrests follow the lat uh, in the Latin and Filipino media. The news received the same media circus coverage as the O.J. Simpson trial, but not much in America. Later, when Lyle and Eric Melendez were on trial, that alleged that they killed their father because he was abusing them. Yeah. Uh, and that that's the whole uh, that's the whole area that that makes them sound like. Maybe it was possible. Like I said, it still doesn't excuse the fact that they they murdered their parents with shotguns. Uh, They had the ability to run away, whether they admitted it or not. They didn't want to change their lifestyle is is ultimately what it came down to. I think one of the most ridiculous looking things I've ever seen was if you watch the trial and you look at uh, the older brother. uh, Is it Eric or? Lyle's the oldest. Lyle's the oldest. The one with the hairpiece. The uh, this guy has got one of the most ridiculous looking hair pieces you'd ever seen back in the day, and uh, it was obvious it was a hair piece. Of, and then and then they actually made part of the trial about the hair piece. Oh really? Yeah, they're like during the trial it was you know, because he had started losing his hair early. His father you know got him that hair piece or whatever, and you know he was very sensitive about it and i don't know whether his father chastised him or threatened to take the hair piece away or i don't it's been it's been many years but it was um that whole thing i remember that being like brought up you know into the trial about the the freaking hair piece so real quick we talked about menudo um it looks and this it only has a couple of the guys on here like as far as age wise yeah. I think Ricky Melen- Ricky Melendez is Ricky Martin. I could be wrong. Maybe. I don't know. But uh, basically, it's 13 to 15, 12 to 15, 11 to 15, 9 to 16. And they do, they did say he left the band when he was 16. And yeah. then that was from 77 to 79. And apparently the last time they had a group was in 2009 for two years. But they don't have the ages of the, the boys. You know, it's funny that those ages are, are the exact same age groups that are like the most popular ages for pedophiles. Right. It's uh, so after they get too old, get, they get rid of them. You know, and I, I think it's, it's one of those things where you look at, and I think there's a lot of these, even the young girls who, and I, I'm only using them as an example. I'm not saying anything happened to them, but... I can remember when Britney Spears came out with uh, Baby Hit Me One More Time. Yeah. Um, it was 1996, I believe. And she was, what, 13 or 14 years old? No, she wasn't that young when she came out, was she? No, no, no. When the song came, or even she recorded the song, yeah. she was like 14. When the video hit, she was like 16. She was super young. You know, so there's that. Let's put them in a girl schoolgirl outfit and have them dance. Or uh, Christina Aguilera again. Not saying anything happened to her. I'm yeah. using them as an example of she was. Re- they're the yeah. same age, and she did Genie in a bottle. Bottle, yeah. and I remember I might have been twenty or twenty one because I was twenty one. I know that I was twenty or twenty one years old. I was older than them. Going, ooh, I feel gross looking at these videos. Just, the music industry has always been a funky thing to me. Um, no, I, well, I, I, you know, pedophilia and and uh, that whole type of thing, that's, that's a whole nother, you know, probably multi-part episode with it. Well, and, but, and I think uh, we could talk about, you know, the accusations of Hollywood actors, yeah. you know, especially the, the, the Corey Haynes yeah. and the Corey, the other Corey yeah. that... Oh, yeah, absolutely. Them, I mean, that, them that's... saying, that basically... That they were molested. Because Corey... What's the other Corey's name? It's Corey Haim and Corey Phelps. Feldman. 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 Now, and then, yeah. which one's, Feldman's still alive, Feldman's right? still alive. Yeah, he's a, Haim's the one who killed himself, I yeah. think. And then it's like, God, we're going to get so many 
hate mail if we got it wrong. Um, I'm pretty sure that's it. Again. One of the Corys is dead. Go watch and the, the other Wars. ones and the other ones has said it was because they were rapist as kids and he was always kind of fucked up from it. Yeah. So you well, know, I, which I mean I would do too. It, there's a whole documentary on uh on YouTube you can look it up about about that. Oh yeah. And it's what I think is well, uh, there was a there was a, yeah. a I don't know what VH1 MTV reality show with them for a few years. Yeah. Where the one who's dead now yeah. lived with the one who's alive. Oh, I saw a so few he, episodes like, of you know, that. Because yeah. he was kind of fucked up in the head. Yeah, he drugged out. They wanted yeah. him to like be cool and straight and whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's reality working. TV, but still, you know. Yeah. I still think in real life he lived with him or something. Well, yeah, they they had they had a history together. They both got famous at the same time, and they had they did at least three movies together from what I from what I remember. It's it's three or a, four, yeah, I don't, I don't yeah. Know. So they they had a a good run together, but the documentary that uh, that was made about <sighs> them being uh, being molested as, along with you know several others over right. the years in the, in that one little group and company. Uh, I like the way the director started the, that documentary. He took uh, some old footage from a different Strokes episode and started the movie with it. Because and that, that was that was well, I, Gary Coleman, right? It was Gary Coleman and uh, Todd uh, Todd Bridges. Bridges, yeah. And I, I remember this episode as a little kid because it was such a uh, an alarming episode. You know what I mean? It was one of those episodes that just uh, it was memorable. Was it one of the? Uh, it was the molest. It was the, the molestation, molestation yeah. episode that every show did. Yeah, well, in the eighties. I don't know if every show did one. To be honest with you, I'd have to look back. I always see. Here's the thing. And being a kid that was, you know, I mean, I know where the similar. They never age. did that on Little House on the Prairie. Well, Little House on the Prairie was a little different, but I do remember the the comedy shows. Yeah. Every one of them in the eighties, one episode a year was the. This is a very serious. Oh, they always throw. Yeah, the, you, you know, but you they, always had the one. The molestation thing was was a very heavy thing, and during this time period, I only ever remember two things. Yeah. Um. One of them was a, a made for TV TV movie about the Johnny Gotch case, and if no anybody's not familiar with that, look that one up. Um, that's another one they they made uh, a, a relatively recent documentary about it, which is very good. But the uh, back in I think the the eighty early eighties late seventies they had a made for TV movie about the disappearance of this this young mm-hmm. boy while he was out delivering papers. And, uh, I was just going to say that's the paper boy, right? Well, it was apparently the sex trafficking ring that you know that, that this one had. Right, but I just into, yeah, I, that was just because my I was like, yeah. uh, I think it's the paper boy, but I'm yeah. not sure. Yeah, but okay, I, now boy. I know what you're talking about. Yeah, and, and I think too is is but I mean I can remember like and I always get a lot of these shows confused, but I do remember like Full House had one. It was but it was like about rape. And yeah. you know, so not always it wasn't always yeah. molestation, but all those shows always had the, the different strokes. One was was really fucked up because I remember watching this. This isn't just because I saw the documentary. I right. mean, I remember watching the the episode firsthand because if you watch the documentary, you'll see they don't show. They only show clips in the episode. There's this kid who this guy who owns the bike shop, you know, and uh, is is being real cool and real nice to Arnold, and Arnold, you know, somehow ends up like over at his house. And uh, so the guy obviously like feeds him ice cream, and when he's not supposed to, because he's got to go home and eat dinner, and yeah, yeah, you know, tells oh that'll just be our secret, Arnold, all this kind of shit, right? Now they showed that part in in the doc, but what they didn't show was in the in the when I remember watching the episode is they sh- the guy showed him like X rated cartoons or something, something along the lines of Felix the Cat, yeah, yeah, where you know the the, the cartoons and all of a sudden you know out comes a penis or something like that, and I remember like Arnold being like. What is that? You know, that kind of, the way they did the whole thing. But the episode was done very well, and it was very creepy. But I do remember at the very end of the episode, they made a clear distinction, which was pretty brave, I think, for the time period. And I'd never heard it before on television. because like late 19, early 1980s? Like yeah, and this 70s. was the height of the AIDS scare yeah, when yeah. this shit was going on. Is They made a clear distinction that uh, was Todd Bridges' character. So, you know, when the, when the police were coming in and talking to them afterwards, Todd Bridges was... An, I didn't know Mr. McFarley, whatever the hell his name was, was gay. And the cops were like, oh, he's not gay. He's a pedophile. He's a pedophile. Yeah. There's a big, you know, there's there's a big a difference. difference. Yeah. yeah. And then, but I remember Different Strokes was was like the first outed. one to say that, you know, on the, and. Uh, All yeah. right. So quick, quick trivia, trivia 
time. And I don't know. I, I'm going to say it's probably for like it had to have been first first gay character on regular television. Lost in Space, the Doctor. Nope. No, well, he's pretty gay. I think he was. A, I think he was before that. Yeah, no, no, it was after that. Way after. Same time frame we're talking about. Oh, really? Yep. Alf? Nope. Uh, trying to think. Of Billy Crystal as Jody from Soap. Oh, shit. You're right. I completely forgot about that. Yep. That's actually I. Um, another quick trivia since we were talking yeah. about, not that he was a serial killer, but uh, Benson... Yeah, Benson came, came, out from of, soap. came out of soap. Yep. I like the uh, the old guy in soap, the one that Robert, was crazy. Robert Guillaume played Benson. Oh yeah, who was the, who was the crazy old old white guy? You know that that was like locked up or, or something like. That. The one that was the dad. He was like the dad. I, 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 you know, I, I in my head I see him, but I don't know what his name is. Oh, uh, he's. But so I old. do know the mom is still around because she was. Tony Danza's mother-in-law. She was mother the in mother-in-law yeah. on yeah on that show, and yeah. there's there's somebody we could talk about not Tony Danza but um, Alyssa Milano, and how she has oh god she's still man my mom always my mom still says to me if you could still have the poster up you had in your room growing up <laughs> you would I said yeah but it'd be kind of dirty because she's like fourteen you know but you can't do that anymore. you know you but get I mean a new poster right I knew the the forty two year old version of her probably looks exactly the same. But uh, um, how she's really led like the 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 Me Too movement now, and yeah. how the shit she went through of being a young actress. That's the thing is that the Me Too the Me Too movement. Um, yeah, but I, I for me, but yeah. for me with her, and I am not. This is a whole different. Well, I'm not saying anything negative about. Yeah, yeah, no, 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 no. What I'm saying, but I think for her is her being probably the first. I mean, because I don't really remember there being female superstars. Yeah. In my my time frame, as a forty yeah. two year old, she's the first one that I can go because there was Ricky Schroeder and yeah. there was Webster, and then there was Alyssa Milano. As far as like child stars, yeah, like child stars. So, you know, like yeah. the guys who were older. You guys had Farrah Fawcett, but she was older. Yeah, she, she wasn't was a, older. a kid. She was a kid superstar. I guess uh, for for my yeah, no, no, for no, no, my yeah. group, you know what for I mean? Your generation, my generation or. I mean, she's still your generation. You're only three yeah, years no, old. No, no, she totally was. I just, uh, but as as a little, you know, as a little kid, yeah. For me, it was. It, I keep mentioning Little House on the Prairie, but it was like that. A, 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 oh, like Melissa, Melissa, Melissa Gilbert, Gilbert, yeah, yeah. Okay, you know, that, and see, that's but that's our generation. That's probably what about yeah. seven or eight years yeah. difference. And so, like for me, again, yeah. it was you know. It was oh, yeah. Alyssa Milano. And then, you know, after Alyssa Milano was uh, uh, the girls from Full House. Yeah. Not not the twins, but <laughs> You know, that's the funny thing is that they were they were those were those shows were all not that they weren't big shows, but you know, they, they kinda like I don't not many of those stars did much after each one of those shows kind of thing. Do you know what I mean? Well Alyssa Milano did. A shitty vampire flick, and then that 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 show with the three witches. Yeah, but you know that was on. She probably did two hundred. Yeah, but you remember too. She's she's she, keeping working, which she, you know, she has never. She has been a working actress yeah. for probably thirty five years. Because yeah. she she's another one too that started off as a kid or you know a baby. You know who I, did you watch SNL recently with uh, Jason Momoa on it? No, but I know who he is. All right, did you know who his wife is? Yeah, it's a uh, um um Lisa Bonet. Lisa Bonet and. She used to be married to Lenny Kravitz. Yeah. Now, and what, you, know what, you, what, you, what you were just saying, Alyssa Milano, for you, when the Cosby show was out, oh. it was her. Oh, yeah. For me. It and was she, her. Well, that was, but she oh, was, my God. But for me, she was the older woman. You're right. You're, you're, no, she was for me. She was like a year old, you oh, know, yeah. she, or she's, maybe two. I was like the freshman. She was like the senior type, maybe that. Because I'm going to say she's what a. About she's 48. 50. No, she's about 50. 50. She might be know. 55. No, she's not that old. She could be. No. She looks no great. Way. Hmm. But yeah. The, the, uh, but, but you know, and you know that Jason Momoa and Lenny Kravitz are like pals. Well, I mean, right? you can either be enemies or be friends. Right. And that's what I always think is, well, Jason Momoa is. Yeah. It, it goes like this for me. Yeah. Celebrities I want to have a beer with. Jason Momoa. Yeah. Barack Obama. Hell yeah. Uh, the Pope, because he drinks beer. Um, 
you know, so. I hate to say it, you know, and this is, this is contrary to my political beliefs at all, but I wouldn't mind having a beer with uh, Bush number two. Oh. He just it, seems like the guy, you know. You know, he's been sober for 40 years now. But I think if he had a beer, it'd probably be a fucking party. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Either that or he's just going to go back to doing cocaine and on Air Force Two. So, I mean, he just seems like the president, you know, him or, or, or Clinton, you know, they seem like the party presidents. Oh, I, think, uh, I think Clinton would just have hookers. Yeah, that's the, th- <laughs> that, that's the thing. Clinton probably wouldn't be any fun at a party because he's too much of a poon hound. Right. You know, it's, uh, where are the whores, boys? You right. Know, the God. And then, uh, but, you know, and I think... Uh, to get back to what we were talking about. I don't um, know what we were talking about. We, we were, again, we talked about TV. Shock. Oh, Angel. That's what I was going to say. Angel Heart. You remember them? Did you ever see a movie called Angel Heart with Mickey Rourke and uh, Robert De Niro? Yes. Uh, Robert De Niro plays the devil? Yeah. Yeah. Lisa Bonet is in that. Oh, yeah, yeah, I think that was pr- probably the the best maybe she had ever looked in her life. But she, but in that in that movie, oh, my God, that's... When that, that first came out and I first saw that, that was, uh, she was By the it. way, when you post this, make sure you hashtag Jason Momoa, yeah. hashtag Aquaman, so we get more views. <laughs> yeah, hashtag Aquaman. But yeah, no, he's blowing up. This is his spot. Right. You so know. here's, okay, now see him. We're going to go back into my And he's trivia. not a young guy either. That's, he's, he's 39. I'm like, that's, Right. You know, so that's... what it what was his first real celebrity job? Shit, if I know. Oh, man, you're going to love this. What? Baywatch Hawaii. He was on Baywatch. Baywatch Hawaii, him and Grace Pack. That was uh, she. We was on the recent Hawaii Five O. She raced, she left like two seasons ago though. Because the Baywatch Hawaii was a different show than the original Baywatch. No, no, no. Well, yeah, it was the. It was like Baywatch ended, and yeah, Mitch and they... Mitch got a job in Hawaii. Hawaii, okay. you know. It's uh wow. So I, I didn't know. I I only I think I saw some. Well, wet... it was one of those things that where he did that and then went to college. So he left Hollywood for like five years or whatever. Mm-hmm. And I think he did like commercials or some shit. But like never was... There. If you look at his IMDb, there's nothing really there. And then he just... It's like, boom, he's in a couple shitty movies. And then he's in the, uh, the HBO show that he was on. That's what I must have... I saw something on Netflix or something. I saw a brief snippet where it was like it was a period piece and he was... Well, he's in mercenary he, or something. No, bounty he, hunter. He is a he is on a know, show revolutionary yeah. in uh like it's yeah it's set in the the redcoats era. Yeah, that's uh, a, I don't remember what it's called, but that show's really good. That was the I saw I saw one episode of that. That was the that's the only thing I've seen him in. Oh no, he's um, in the he's in the HBO. He's in that. Uh, I don't watch HBO. I don't yeah, have what's HBO. that? What's that? Uh, with the dra- the flying dragons and there's all the, the oh, ice yeah. people and all that. Is it the Vikings or some no, shit? No, 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 that's a, that's that's on A and E. Oh, is that the shit that Anton named his character after? Wasn't Anton's character after that shit? I don't know. No, Anton's from well, Anton, he's yeah, he's Anton. Um, no, right. what's the it's yeah, but didn't Anton what, get his character? With the midget that drinks and all that, and the brother and sister. Yeah, have sex I know, together. I know exactly. Either they're blonde or almost white haired girl. I, yeah. The fuck is the name? Not Lord of the Rings. I've never watched it, but I, I know. I know the. Uh... It's the one where you remember when Sasha in the is promos it? we did. He said, oh, "I'm the King of the North." It's like that's tw- from that. Yeah, movie. well, that's what I thought. What's his name? My Anton took some shit from that back in the day too. He probably did. It's uh, what the fuck was uh? We're talking about Anton Voorhees and Every- Sasha Jerevko. Everybody who's watching this shit right now is probably yelling the name of this stupid show at us right now. I didn't look, but my phone's dead. So. <laughs> I don't know some fantasy dragon shit, whatever, and then I guess that's what he was in. They're gonna hate us. They're show, gonna hate whatever. us for calling it fantasy shit, dragon shit. You know. Uh, God, it's gonna bug me now. That's like, grow the fuck up. Go Red Dex Caliber from like 1983 and, and suck it. You fucking fantasy stuff. Oh. You know. I'm a Viking. You know how the Vikings looked like back then? Like shit. No fucking teeth. They they're certainly. Well, the, uh, I do like the, I haven't watched it in a while, but the show that's Vikings, they, uh, it, so there's a show on Netflix that's about the, it's like the reverse, like, uh, the Nordsman or the, no, yeah. like whoever they always like rated and stuff. It's about that. Right. They like, rated everybody. Yeah. But it's like, there's a, it's like a period piece. Right. Yeah. So then. 
there's Modern day Vikings. <laughs> there's the show Vikings yeah. that airs. So if you watch both of them, you kind of get the both sides of the story oh, yeah. full circle. Because, But then it's weird because a couple of the actors look like the actors oh, who yeah. play the characters on the other show. And I'm always like, is that the same one? Could be. Yeah. I just... I'm a, I'm too much of a nerd. I, I, I watch documentaries. I think it's called the well, Last Kingdom. I'm about that. It's the shit. one on Netflix. Have you heard of the Saxon Horde? Yeah. The uh, or um, what's the? Uh, I mean, you want to talk about rape and pillaging and murdering <laughs> the Vikings and the Nor and the and the Saxons? I mean, well, yeah, but the I, I'm fascinated with the jewelry from that time period or, or the or, or the, the the oh god, there's a uh, see, we don't just talk about murder. No, there, there was, there was a great a, a find just before World War II, um, and the name is escaping me right now. But uh, there was a, a mound, a burial mound yeah, that, yeah, that yeah. was dug right. up, and they found, you know, the, these uh, mostly armor, you know, but they were like jewel, ink, crusted jeweled. with jewels. Yeah, I mean, like the amount of detail in this in this type of uh, jewelry was just beautiful. It's you like almost impossible to have been done, but they did it. Well, that that's the thing I don't like about everybody's like, oh, it's impossible. They couldn't have done this back then. Well, then how could we do it now? You're right. You know, I mean, I hate to say it, but outside of nuclear fission and modern medicine, everything else, as far as like craftsmanship goes, for the most part. Oh, dentistry's been the same since it's been invented. Well, dentistry's come come a long way, but I mean, like for example, swords. I'm just I'm gonna just go through. Not that we use a lot of swords in modern day fucking time, but. That what I mean is the construction of blades. We should. No, Everyone should just right. get, get swords. We should all just carry swords. That'd be great. But the nobody has ever made a blade finer than a Japanese blade. Never, ever. And yet this is, you know, a thousand years ago they were folding steel and right. adding carbon and folding steel and adding and getting it to where it can cut without breaking. And yeah, so... I, mean, I just don't buy this shit. You think that all our ancestors were fucking idiots that just sat around picking their asses and uh, uh, you know. Don't. Well, and I think it goes to the fact of I think I do think we talked about this idiot, the the Christian guy who tried to go to the island and got killed. Oh yeah, we totally spoke. We mentioned this. I'm pretty guy. sure. So they, I was reading the article even since then when now the that guy's church is trying to say those people need to be arrested. And the government's like, no, you fucking idiots! You're not supposed yeah. to go there. Yeah. Um, they're like, well, they don't. They don't think they've discovered fire. They don't even have fire. That's what they're saying. And, but they had like an archaeologist who said, look at their fucking arrows, you idiot! They couldn't have those unless they had fire. Right. And so, like, they've at least, you know, but it's that, that forest, even though it's on a. Uh, you know, on an island, yeah. it's so dense you couldn't see f smoke, anyways. Yeah. If they had a fire, I'd heard that uh, they they st they impaled, I guess the uh, the last two guys they had killed and stuck them out by the beach like scarecrows. No, they put their heads and their their arms and their legs, but they were on sticks. Yeah. Like, so it was like they had a body. Yeah. But they put the head, the arms, and the legs on it. Yeah. And just the stick was the body. Ah, oh, Jesus Christ! And they—that they was the one though that they—they uh, uh, they ate the rest of them. They ate well, yeah, because they're cannibals, and or they'll eat, you know, they'll cannibalize you but not each other. And then uh, uh, they do think though that they eat the dead. So when you die, they eat you. Yeah. So you live inside everyone else. Yeah. Well, there's. That's a you know, how much of the dead do they eat? Is, is it literally just well? That, but the thing was, they don't know. Yeah, it's all guessed because because uh, nobody can get close to them. Well, and that was the thing too. Is you know they they sent drones, yeah. and they took the drones out with arrows. Did they? Yeah. Wow. You know, and threw them in the water. Poor drones. Right. I think the only good thing was they had GoPros on them, so they survived. Yeah. Yeah, because they found a. Uh, I want to say they had three, and they found two of them floating in the water. Hmm. You know? Yeah. it's uh, You want to study them, but at the same time, you, you can't get close to them. Well, you know, the, the I always forget what government that is now. That Indian. The Indian government now is saying they're basically going to have a 24-hour, 365-day patrol unit 
that that's what they're now you're just going to patrol the circle the island all day long and that's going to be their job wow. and they're even saying they might try to get them a uh like a boat that's um uh like solar powered so it doesn't make noise it's a good idea electric yeah or an electric one just so it doesn't bug them and they'll be out far enough because they will fish, but they only fish on the island. They don't have boat. They don't have boats, hmm. but they've built boats because uh, there was the guys that uh, the they had a shipwreck on the island, and you can still see the shipwreck because hmm. that's where they're getting the iron ore for for their arrows is on the shipwreck. And the guys hunkered down for like ten days and basically shielded themselves in the boat wow. away from the attacks. Wow. So wait, so they're actually making. Iron or steel, you know, arrow tips from a from a sunken ship. Yes. They how did they found those arrows or something? It just that. Well, I don't know if they, yeah. what they found. I'm just saying that they they've been spotted via like drones higher up. Yeah. Basically taking metal from the ship and work. And they're it. saying that it looks like the arrows they're using yeah. are from the metal ship. Hmm. I just would. I, and I'm fascinated with anything like that only because oh, yeah. metalworking, you know, has gone through many ages. Bronze Age, Iron Age. Well, and that's the thing. It's iron. And that, they said it's iron. It's all iron. Yeah. It's an iron ships. So it's, you know, they're iron ore. Yeah. You know? At the same time, the, the amount of um, the temperature it takes in order to melt it. Right. In order to work it properly um, means you have to blow air into the fire, which which for any length of time means you have to develop a bellow. Right. Which is what's... Like I said, these are all really interesting thoughts. That are they really doing this? Let's. Yeah. I'd like to see how they're doing it. Or they're just breaking the metal up and using it as arrows. I don't know. It's hard if to say. If they can break it, yeah, that's the, taking taking rusty bits off of it. Well, I also can't. think, yeah, the ship is rusted. So because I've yeah. seen pictures of the ship, but that I could say taking rusty bits and jamming right, it into then, their arrowheads. Because it's just like the uh, there's that they found a tribe in Chile about. 10 years ago, uh, people that were um, archaeologists, scientists, looking for new life and looking for, mm -hmm. you know, deer and bugs and things like that. Yeah. And they came across them and they just stood there and stared and almost like, who are you and what are you? Mm -hmm. And they were like, uh, we're going to, and they, everyone was like, don't look at them, just keep walking. Yeah. And, you know, they had guys, they gun guys with guns, but yeah. the guys just calm and went. And there's, I, I wish I, if my phone's dead, I probably could find it on YouTube, where I do know one guy had a GoPro on. Yeah. And he posted it, and you actually can barely see them on the GoPro. Yeah. Even though he's like 15 feet from them. Wow. Because they just match the, the background. Because at one point I stared, because I've seen the video, actually, yeah. I saw it at a, a university, and said, you know, like, what are you talking about? And finally the professor zoomed out and almost had them outlined and i was yeah. like oh now i see them and he yeah. goes they could have walked past them 50 times that day and not even noticed there's a another great documentary i found on youtube which which uh, shows the uh, first contact of a tribe out of the amazon mm. and uh it's it's rare that they have first contacts on film right and so this was uh Three three guys that were they literally walked out of the jungle out of one tribe and were you know c contacting the other and then the, there was a standoff you know where they were trying to tell them we're good people we're not you know trying to hurt you and because they didn't I mean there have been many many other first contact cases including like this kid where a missionary or scientist ends up dead right and so this was the real this is on camera this whole shit's going on and these guys are got spears in hand and you know but it's only three of them and it turns out they were three that were uh escaping uh hunters who had actually went into the forest to kill uh oh, the these, tribes the tribes and what it is is it's um you have uh gold miners mm -hmm. literally that are going up the amazon river into into uh all these little you know offshoots of the river and they're going into areas where tribes have not been contacted mm -hmm. yet. And they're making these first contact. And the tribes are attacking, which is what they do. And these people are shooting them and just, just killing them, you know, flat out. 
So it's a uh, it's a great documentary, and the, and the fact that it, it, you get to see something firsthand that you rarely ever see. Mm-hmm. This really is a first contact type thing. Also, the um, I guess I, you want to just it's the brutality of the of the jungle. The, the and the reality of like they they show them these uh these kids chasing these little baby piglets you know wild piglets that are running through things and just killing them like it's that's nothing because you know they're they're gonna eat right that's, that's food do, yeah well to the same extent when they for make this first contact there's a woman in the group of scientists and you can see one of the three guys like the leader of the three guys telling one of his guys take her take her fuck her. Mm. That literally they translated on screen like that. And obviously, that didn't happen, right? And, and, and you know, and these guys had to be taught um, manners, right? Right. right. A little bit of you know civilization. Well, it's, I had a friend. I wish he was actually still alive. My friend's dad actually was talking about. He was a uh, uh, an oilman, but he was in the seventies uh, and eighties. Yeah. He was the guy who they did the pipelines. Okay. And he said um, that. You know, they had ex-military guys yeah. who were security. Mm-hmm. They were always told, don't shoot unless shot at. Yeah. The problem was, a lot of times they weren't getting shot at by guns. Yeah. It was darts arrows, and arrows. Rocks. Yeah. You know, rock things. And he goes, dude, you're firing into a forest and you don't even know where you're, you're shooting. Yeah. He goes, and no one in the military shoots at anything they don't really know. Yeah, yeah. So it was really hard for those guys. And, you know, this is that era where guys were coming home from Vietnam. Yeah. Screwed up in the head and then getting these jobs where they were making a hundred grand a year to live in the jungle for six months or whatever it was. And he said, he goes, you know, a lot of the guys killed women and children that were in these tribes because they're just trying to defend their forests. Innocent. But they were told, when fired upon, even if it's rocks and arrows, yeah, fire back. to fire back, even if you can't see anything. Yeah. You know, it's like, oh man, I, how could you even... <coughs> That's like, the, isn't that the whole Quigley Down Under story? Uh, Tom Selleck? Yeah, I know what you're talking about, I just can't remember. Yeah, they hired him to kill the Aborigines. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, man. Tom yeah. Selleck. That's a Magnum. It's the man. That's right. But, uh, I love the new Magnum PI, too. You know the uh, you know the gun he uses in that? I uh, can't think of the name off the top of my head. But, well, uh, he had a 45. No, not in the original. But they, and then the new one. The new one, he's using the... Uh, no, in the new one, he's using the Glock. But in the old... No, it's not a Glock. It's a five thousand um, dollar. What the hell's the name of that thing? Look, look, look it up. My father went and uh, when he was in Florida not that long ago, rented one, and uh, like the world's most accurate handgun right now. Oh, the coast, the STI coast to carry That's comp it. magnum. The STI. Okay. You, you, you look at the prices on STIs. They are beautiful. I mean, I'm not a gun guy, but if I was going to spend money on something, it would be some. It would be because something's more accurate. But the original Magnum gun was a 45. It's yeah, right there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But the but that the new one, that new S, that STI. Yeah. My father's got a um, a Beretta. Right. And so, and he's you know goes to the range and he's pretty good with it but he said uh when he rented that sti it, it suddenly made him a lot better just in one you know i don't know two boxes or rounds yeah but uh yeah that's a four i do i do think uh um that um these new um the new guns that have come out, the, like the, the STI, and there's the, um, there's another one that's the same, you know, it's supposed to be very accurate, yeah, yeah. very this. It's a, you know, it's carbon fiber and it's all this and that. Mm-hmm. I was watching a, um, one of the hunting YouTube shows. Yeah. 
the guy got one for his birthday from his wife. Yeah. First off, he was like, should I buy this gun for my birthday? Because you ain't got a job. Like, literally, right, it was like, yeah. you're a stay-at-home mom. Like, no kidding. But it's just like, shut up, you know? And he goes out there. And all his buddies are giving him shit. And he goes out to the shooting. Like, and they're all just like, honey, my birthday's coming up. <laughs> yeah, right. Exactly. No, they're... I uh, the worst thing about I've I've been out to the range you know out here even several times and we're depending on which one I rent you know it, it especially you know being a rental weapon anyway you just uh, even even with the the sticky targets that turn green or orange whatever yeah, yeah. you hit them after ten rounds I'm not sure where the hell I'm landing right right right, right. and that's what I, I can't stand and I lo- you know, like I said if I, Five grand is steep for a firearm, and certainly, you know, not something I'd, I'd do lightly at all. The one, considering you can get one for like six hundred dollars, maybe a grand, right, for a nice one anywhere else. I but, bet you we can go down the street, Phil, get one for forty bucks, right? <laughs> but it, but if something's that much more accurate, I mean, that's yeah. the reason because that's my biggest frustration. Anybody's frustration, I think, is shooting. You want to hit what you're shooting at, right? So anyway, so we started off this one with what. <laughs> It's the New Year's episode. We're it's starting the, with family like, crimes. We're in, now we're talking about guns and guns. TV shows and Me Too. and We talked about the Benendez brothers and... Uh, Lisa Bonet and Jason Bonet. Momoa. Yeah. J- Momoa, Momoa. <laughs> um, first gay character on television. Billy Crystal's character, yeah. yeah. Uh, Soap. That was a good show. Right. Yeah. Uh, we covered not a lot of blood in the episode. Right? See? We don't we always say we talk about random shit. Yeah. Um last episode was more blood than this episode. Oof, sure. That was last the the Christmas Eve episode was That's brutal. A rough one. So Hell, I think more people have been murdered in that episode than all the episodes put together. It, by numbers, you're right. Yeah. Yeah. You know, so Well, well I think we gotta call it a call it a year. Call it a year, yeah. Put this like, one to what, bed. What do we get? Twelve episodes in? Maybe. Eleven, twelve, something 11 like 12. that. We'll have more next we'll year. Anyways, we didn't start till what September? No, it's uh, we got it started. We'll keep going to 2019, and uh, we'll make sure the first episode for 2019 is uh, got plenty more blood for you. Well, plenty to talk about, I'm sure. In the next, well, in the next week. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> So, anyways, thanks for joining us again. Happy New Year! Happy New Year, everybody, from Cities of Blood Podcast. Woo! See you next time.